back to the crochet crowd. This was my friends at yarninspirations.com. This is a Sumerai stitch, and this is a combination of four chains that can do this. So you can do this as big as you need to go. Just keep it always in sets of four. Let's begin this right away, and let's start. Let's start immediately with sets of four. So multiples of four. So we have one, two, three, four. Big enough, yes or no. If not, keep on going. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four four, one, two, three, and four. So you can go as big as you need to go and then hold and start row number one in just a moment. I'm now ready for row number one. It is a real pain, just so you know. So if it's you struggling, it's probably me as well. So you're going to go fifth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, and five. And I wanna turn it and get the back hump of the chain for me, it's the only way to do this stitch is to stay on the back hump. But if you want to do it the conventional way, then you can decide that and suffer the consequences. <laughs> so you're going 15 for the hook and you're going to double crochet that one. Once you do that one, the chain will stay turned upside down, which will be easier to see the next three or two stitches. So once the first one's in, add two more double crochets so that you have a total count of three. See this lonely little stitch right here? Okay, this is before this three, you are going to wrap the hook and go into that, dragging this yarn across the front of the project and going in from the back, scoop it around. So pull it through. Give it a bit of slack and pull through two and two. So this here is wrapped around both the front and the back. So it makes it a double-sided project. So then to start another um, set, you're going to skip the next chain and you'll put in three double crochet after that. Skip one. So one, two, and three. It does get easier. It's just the first row is a real serious pain. So now that the three are in, you're going to come into the one you skipped. And you're just gonna go into that one. Let the yarn rest in front and grab it from behind and pull through. Give it a bit of slack. Pull through two and two. Like that. Okay, so these are resting in front. So you're going to skip the next one, double crochet the next three. And you're going to continue this all the way across. I promise you it will get easier. It sounds like I'm struggling, kind of am, but that's fine. We'll get through it. Okay, so you're gonna come into the one you skipped. And once you get more material in your hands, it's a lot easier to hold as well. There you go. So I'm getting a little more consistent with the tension. So I'm skipping the next one, and I'm double crocheting the next three. Coming into the one I skipped. Okay, give it a little bit of slack. And therefore you'll have one stitch that was left over on the chain and you were just going to double crochet that one that's left once you get to the end. So the first row is kind of awkward to be able to get across. And your tension, do you see how this looks different from here? So my tension is a bit off. So you want to concentrate on making sure that your tension looks intentional. Okay, so it may require you to practice this stitch before you get really onto a real project. There we go, and then just double crochet in the last. So it's good to be a little bit particular sometimes. double crocheting in your last one here. So when you turn it around, you'll see that the dragging has happened and now it's gonna get easier from this point. Let's do row number two and beyond. To do row number two and beyond, it's just chain three, that's your first double crochet. You're going to skip your first one out here 
Okay, so here's your first one. Skip this next one and double crochet the next three in a row. So the one you're skipping is where your sumerai stitch is going to go into. That's right here. So just going on in, let this drag across the front, grab it from behind, pull through, give it a bit of slack. Just be consistent with your slack. So skip the next one, double crochet the next three. So one, two, and three. Come into the one you skipped in, pull through, just like that. And so you're repeating that same instruction all the way across. Now, because you started with the Sumerai stitch at the very beginning, you can pretty much end on any row that you would like to, but if you would like for consistency, just look at how the first one looks and maybe the last row should look the same, but you have to determine that for yourself. And then once you get this motion into your hands, it's a lot easier to be able to handle. But again, that first row is uh, less than to be desired. And then on the last turning chain here, it's one double crochet that will sit by itself. So when you turn around, you can see it looks just like that. So you start again, chain three, do your sumerai stitching across, and therefore it will come up and then over and then up and over, almost like a zigzag all the way throughout this whole thing. So this is the sumerai stitch.